Good evening. Welcome to the Bath Studio School election special with me, Megan Smart, and me, Zoe Coburg. Tonight, who will win? A professor of politics from the University of Bath is here with us to give us his predictions. Live look at the school poll results. And live from down the street with the Prime Minister's speech. But first this evening, we have our reporter, Albie, in the studio to talk to Professor Cloudsley. Over to you, Albie. Tonight, I'm going to interview the professor of politi politics from the University of Bath. Nice to meet you. Please, could you introduce yourself? Hi, uh, my name's Charlie Lee. So I'm Professor of Politics at the University of Bath. Good to meet you, Albie. Thank you. So what do you, what do you predict will be the results of tonight's um, votes? Well, I don't think I could predict a winner, because I think actually there's not yes. going to be a clear winner. If you had to, if you gave me, if you forced me to, uh, to go down to a, a betting shop and put money on it, I would probably put money on uh, the Conservatives being the single biggest party. <laughs> but they will fall short of uh, being able to form a majority. And we don't live in a presidential system, it's a parliamentary system, which means that any government that forms has to command the confidence of the House. So it may not be the Conservatives that actually form the government because they are, are pretty short of allies in the House of Commons, apart from the Liberal Democrats and possibly UKIP, but there's some problems there. There's very few other parties that they could do business with. Okay, thank you. What do you think the reasons are for the closeness of the election? I think the reasons for the closeness is that the country is genuinely divided over where to go in the future. I think there's a number of different uh, dimensions of division within Britain. Uh, the first thing you've got to realise is that the Labour Party would be on track for a majority if it wasn't for the <coughs> fact that it appears to have melted down in Scotland. And the change in the political mood in Scotland is something that basically threatens the fabric of the United Kingdom in the long run, but at the moment is interfering with the Labour Party's electoral calculations. There's also a genuine division, I think, between people who feel that the, the books, the, 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 the deficit has to be tackled and that we have to uh, balance the books in the shortest possible time, regardless of uh, austerity policies and some of the costs that that entails for uh, ordinary working people, and people who feel that we should go a bit slower. And that's reflected in the fact that there's no clear um, front run runner in this uh, election. That's interesting, thank you. Um, have the politicians done enough to present a positive um, vision for the UK, or have they, they spent they, they too much time criticising their opponents? Yeah. Well, the short answer to that is uh, no and yes. Uh, but the longer answer is that uh, they haven't done anything really to uh, really sort of articulate a long term vision because politicians live in a very short term bubble. They have to be re elected on a maximum of five years. Uh, some of the changes, some of the structural changes that need to be really addressed in this country along, for example, the lines of tackling our massive problem with productivity would take 15, 20 years. It's a generational problem. And politicians can't wait that long. So most of the debate has been around what we would call uh, core vote strategies, where you're basically appealing to your core voters to come out and vote for you. And also, as a sort of quid pro quo to that, there's another strategy which is called small target. So your core vote is basically being appealed to, and you do as little as possible to alienate floating voters who might, might vote for you as well. Okay, thank you. Um, all we as young people see, um, are the politicians acting childish? Yeah, yeah, well, uh, I think they, 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 they're not as sensible as you are, I have <laughs> to say. Uh, but I think a lot of this is, do, is to do with the news cycle. Um, politicians cannot afford to allow um, claims made against them to be embedded within the news cycle. Uh, to give you an, an example of what happens if you do that, if you look back to 2010 after the current government formed, the Labour Party spent about six months basically fighting a leadership election and took their eye off the ball in terms of rebutting stories about who was responsible for the recession, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So regardless of who you think was responsible, nevertheless the country got it into their head that right. Labour were responsible and they hadn't rebutted it. So most politicians most of the time sound childish because they are basically in a kind of Yabu sucks, he said, she said kind of battle to prevent <coughs> messages from being embedded within the news cycle. Okay, thank you. Um, do you think we should be able to vote from the age of 16? Um, I actually, I, I think if you're old enough to pay taxes, if you're old enough to work, you should be old enough to vote. Okay, thank you for spending some time with us today at the Bath Studio School. Thank you. Thank you. I'm handing over to Zoe and Megan. Thank you, Albie. Now a look at our live polls. The Conservatives won the election with 31%, Labour with 
UKIP come in third with 17%, Green Party with 19%, and finally Lib Dems with 6%. <coughs> Zoe, what do you think about these results? I think these results were the ones the most predictive. Yes, and will this change between now and 2020? Now to our very own number 10 Downing Street with the Prime Minister's speech. Do you think school results correspond with what you think the actual results might be? Well, Zoe, that's a really good question. I think there's probably going to be quite a strong correlation between our results and the national results. Um, our, our results showed that uh, the Conservatives were in the lead and uh, the Liberal Democrats actually collapsed in terms of their vote here in Bath. But um, it's all to play for tonight, I think. And uh, the Labour Party and the Conservatives are neck and neck. So it's, in, it's going to be a very interesting evening, I think. Are you surprised by the statistics of the school poll? If so, why? Well, what was very interesting about the statistics was how the Green Party really did thrive in our poll. And the Green Party have played a very good campaign here in Bath, and young people are particularly interested in the issues of energy conservation, global warming, and the concerns about traffic congestion. So it's no surprise the Greens have done very well, but also there's a very strong vote for equality, equality of opportunities, new jobs, which is uh, part of the manifesto of both the Labour and the Conservative parties. So I think it's going to be a very interesting evening here in Bath, um, where the majority of the Liberal Democrats may be under real pressure. If, as predictive, there were a coalition government after this election, which two parties would be most preferable as a joint lead? Well, I don't think it's going to be as simple as just two parties. I think perhaps we're going to see a coalition of a group of parties. I think what's really important in this election is that we get stable government, because stable government is good for everybody. Uh, we've gone through a really difficult period over the last five years of austerity. Uh, the economy is picking up, and it's time for all the parties to work together for the best, e best efforts of uh, all people. And I think it's really important that uh, the politicians think very carefully about what relationships they're going to build in the next few days if we do indeed have um, a hung parliament. Thank you, Mr Kathnack. Thank you, Zoe. Some, st some strong feelings about the election now. Now that's all we have time for. It's goodbye from Megan and I. Thanks for watching and have a lovely evening.